Biohacker Summit 2019 with our speaker for the day, Yarrow Willard, who's come all the way from Canada here to be with us. And we have some questions from our live stream audience for you. Awesome. Happy you to be talk, here. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you. You talk a lot about nature. What would you say are the first steps for us to connect with nature? Well, if you live in a city, there's always a park by. So my suggestion is to find a spot in a park close to where you live where there's a big old tree and just take time to sit there. Sit for five to ten minutes and do this every week in the same spot. As you build a rhythm with that place, you start to deepen and drop into your heart every time you sit there and it becomes a ritual. And so to me, that is the best thing ever is to just find a sit spot. The other thing to do is become a re weekend warrior. You know, get out on the weekends when you have time to natural environments. And slowly, you get more curious about the plants and start to learn about each plant that is there. We live in quite a cold climate here in Finland. How does it work? Like, it, it, does it matter if you're sitting on something under a tree or do you actually need to physically connect with the ground or the tree well, in nice order to... it's nice to ground have... in yes. in some way, but you can do that by just touching the tree. Okay. Right? And yeah, you can wear your snowshoes in the winter if you yes. need to. Um, and sometimes bundle up. Like, don't be cold. Like, it's, this isn't about a, like, superhuman thing. This is yes. about dropping into your heart. So be comfortable and just connect and slow down your rhythm to be with that tree or with that environment. Listen to the squirrels if there are in the summer, the wind blowing, the different tracks in the snow if there is, and just start to notice what's going on around you. Nice. Five to ten minutes sounds very doable. <laughs> like, Even if it's just two to three minutes. Yeah. Like, but it's the regularity that matters. It's Once a week because yeah, everyone Building a cadence. Can. And you can start every day if you want to. Like there's no yeah. like law about this but yeah, or yeah, yeah. rule, so to speak. But I recommend that you get out during the winter, during the fall, during the summer, during the, during the, the spring to each to the same place so that you build Absolutely. it with that space. Yes. Do you think there's some pattern around us that's most overlooked in general? I think if you talk to anyone who knows anything about like diagnostic techniques from Chinese medicine or Ayurvedic medicine, they're always seeing the pattern. Like it's, it's easy for me to tell people who have too much inflammation or people who are too much in their head just by the way they walk. So these patterns are really intuitive. We see that just by the way they move, the way they communicate with their voice. We can see and diagnose ourselves and each other very easily. We just want to look at the patterns and maybe check out some of the maps from different cultures. But the biggest pattern I think that I often notice that is missing in people is, is a pattern of alignment. There's, there's like jarred energies, discombobulation. You can really tell when somebody's truly present and when they're partially occupied and partially distracted and partially in their head or having gut issues, you can see that. You can see it in the discomfort or in the not embodied thing. So that's the biggest thing is to be fully embodied. Do you have a tip for what's like the easiest or simplest way to become embodied and sort of realign? Well, as I said in the talk, it's about practice. It's about practice. Do this regularly, but also let go of some of the data. Be present. So practice in presence. So be in the present moment to be nimble enough to really start to feel into what is needed in this moment. What is needed for me right now? How can I be of service right now? That's a big piece of being embodied. Am I really doing what is best for me right now? And often like people take breaks out, they might smoke or have a coffee or, or check their phone to take a break to disembody for a moment which is okay too, mm. to come back. I'm not, nothing right, nothing wrong with it. But when you come back, be embodied, right? Don't be distracted waiting for the next break, 
whatever your break is, come back to present moment. That sounds really actually very simple, but it's effective. Not yeah. It's not hard. That's, that, we make it too complicated sometimes mm -hmm. by putting all these ideas and rules and things on ourselves and exactly. limitations in some ways. True, true. We have another question from our live stream audience. Uh, how can we be a lighthouse? <laughs> <laughs> so this term I really like. It comes from another speaker, and I just thought, bring value. How do I bring value? Um, how do I... I don't want to convince anybody. My job is not to convince you. It's not to pull you in. It's to just bring the value, to show up present and embodied and add value to the conversation, add value to the moment. If you're in a kitchen with some friends, how can I help cook? Can I do the dishes? You know, how can I help the situation out? And the more value you add, the more comfortable people are with being around you. Or same with, with, with everything, with the work you do. Don't worry about getting uh, recognition. That's the, the ego that destroys and becomes the tugboat. Because I need recognition. I need people to approve me. Just keep adding value. And pretty soon, most people will start to see, wow, this person's a lighthouse. This person is a, a beacon of how I want to show up. And how can I learn more from that? And that's, that's, it's not hard. Again, simple. It's just sometimes it's eating shadow and recognizing where we are looking for approval or where we are looking for other people to recognize us or where we think we can get something from the situation. Would you say the biggest shift is going from what can I get to what can I give? Like you said earlier, exactly. how can I serve? So coming into every situation. You got it. Yeah. How can I serve? Where can we learn more of, about the cycles for success? <laughs> well, I just put that together because it's something that I've been seeing. I mean, the one about the, the universal law of flow, this is just really simply understanding that where stagnation is. And there's lots of people who speak about flow, whether it's flow state or finding flow in the digestive system. You can learn this from yourself. Like, do my bowels flow well or am I constipated? Does my, do my thoughts come? Can I freestyle a rhyme? For me, freestyle is a fun way to get into flow. Uh, you mean like dance, freestyle yeah, dance? Yeah, freestyle dance or just like make something up on the spot, you know, because it sounds real hot. You're going to get what I got. <laughs> going to flow, going to grow, going to grow with you. Whatever nice. it might be. And it could be silly. Have more fun, maybe. More genuine Have fun. more genuine yeah. fun. Be in flow. But, you know, with some of the other universal laws, things like appreciation... That's really simple. There's no need to explain it. Just appreciate, and you'll see it form around you. Things like measurement, as you measure your reality, you start to track your cadence, do journal rhythms. It's very simple, right? This stuff is not hard. You can learn more by doing it. Did you talk about moon cycles? I did for a moment, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I um, being a man who doesn't menstruate, I still live by this moon cycle, right? Okay. And we all do, and I... I think it's important to recognize, um, and this is why astrology in some places in the world is, is so prevalent, because it's a recognizing of the tendencies of the world around us. And I'm not saying astrology is the be-all, because it's not. It's not, there's no one truth. We need multiple maps to be able to find our own truth. But I know when the moon is full and when the moon is, is, um, is empty or when it's when it's not full I can feel that energy and if I follow a cadence of a moon cycle I can start to recognize how my energy is waxing and waning and how I can forgive the people around me for their waning energy or I can see their waxing energy so I plan everything around this in my own life is that basically what the cycles mean when the moon is full you have more energy and when it's to waning, a degree less? yeah and, and I think of it like from full down to new moon is a cycle of cleansing, of clearing, right? So through that time, everything is, is digesting and moving through and clearing. From new moon to full moon, everything is building, right? So we can start to gauge like building projects in, the, in this time. We can't always live and be, can't be governed by the moon, but we can use it to our advantage, right? To get the most strategic advantage to optimize the way we, we function in the world. So kind of using it as a tool to help us. Yeah, but remember not to make it dogma. Yes. Right? Sometimes this is one of the problems I see with 
a lot of people is we create all these dogmas and rules and parameters around it. Yeah. Just realize that it's a factor, but a it's guide, not the only factor, guideline. right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's many other factors. What about our intuition? What do you think are the best ways to increase and improve that? You've mentioned presence. presence. Yeah, yeah, it's the main one. The other, the other thing is, is starting to affirm our intuition. Often, like, you get that gut feeling, and then you're like, oh, no, that doesn't, I don't know, maybe I'm just making that up. Affirm that. Listen to your body. You know, your body is hyperintuitive. Um, and the more in tune we become with our body, the more we affirm and build confidence in our intuition. We start to see there's plenty of people who, in the blink of an eye, can make a better decision or a better assessment of the situation than tracking it over a long period of time or asking a bunch of experts on a panel about it. In a blink of an eye, you can make the best decision if you learn how to affirm your intuition. So in a way, we all have all those answers inside of us. We do. We're star stuff. You know, we have those answers inside of us. Would you say intuition is a bit like a muscle? Like the more you use it, the stronger it gets. And you then you become more confident in your own Yeah, and intuition. it's okay to be wrong. Just know as you build confidence and you become aware of that, sometimes your intuition can be a bit of a bypass because your ego wants it to be that way. And maybe it's not, you know. So be intuitive, but also be continually flexible to adapt, right? Allow, allow other energies in, not just your intuition. Is that like a good gauge for intuition? How flexible you are? How open-minded you are? How about nimble. Your, yeah, yeah, your responsiveness is, your, your feeling. Are you aligned? Uh, I mean, I find my intuition is best when I'm not like got a big full belly and I'm distracted by work. My intuition is best when, I've, when I'm clear, when I'm clean, when I'm present. So that's how I find. And I, I think it's a superpower. I really do. Um, and it's one of the human superpowers that we, we need to train. Absolutely. It's that bad feeling that people get kind of the GPS saying, go back towards your yeah, intuition. It's, or it's both the good or bad feeling where they're like, oh, I feel like I should really go there. I know I was supposed to do this, but something's calling me that direction. So I, I have this saying, and it's, it's another saying that I, I love. It's called follow the golden threads. And so as a golden thread weaves through your reality, follow it. You know, pay attention to those things that keep building in your life. Follow those golden threads. So really just paying attention and being present. And being nimble to it, like being yeah. flexible to be able to move with your intuition. Absolutely. Thank oh. you so much, Yero. This oh. has been very insightful. My pleasure. We are um, so happy to have you here at the Biohacker Summit. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> it's, it's just such a great honor to, and also to see all of these biohackers and all these people looking to optimize not just their day, but their life to just improve themselves. So thank you for watching and for connecting with my message. Um, you can find me on YouTube. You can find me um, as the Herbal Jedi on any of the social media the channels. The Herbal Jedi on YouTube. Yeah. We got about 100 plus videos. Wow. So may the forest be with you. We'll see you soon, friends. Thank you so much to all our watchers around the world. And we'll be back. All right.